You're watching News 24 Live. Chief Rugby Writer from Sport 24, Rob Howing, is on the ground in England covering the Springboks World Cup campaign for the pool stages. Rob is joining us over Skype this morning for a quick update ahead, of course, of their game against Scotland in Newcastle. Good morning, Rob. Good to see you and uh, enjoying the somewhat sunny weather in England today. First of all, of course, the big news overnight and this morning, Captain Jean de Villiers retiring from rugby. We always knew that at the end of this World Cup he was going to hang up his boots, but again, his World Cup injury hoodoo strikes back. What an absolute uh, disaster for Jean. I mean, uh, it really was... Uh uh, I felt so gutted for him because uh, I'd, I'd just made a mental note, probably about half an hour before his latest mishap, uh, about how things just seemed to be finally coming together for him. Um, he was just looking so much sharper. You know, I was some of the, the, the weighting of his passes, the little sort of, um, you know, sleight of hand that he was showing. You just felt that the, those old skills, the old Jean de Villiers skills were starting to return. Um, and then, you know, for him to take another wretched smack to the jaw, uh, it was just so undeserved, uh, uh, considering the poor guy probably still had an aching jaw from the, the last break. Um, and then a few weeks later, you know, uh, he goes and pops it again in a rather almost sort of innocuous freak challenge, if you like. There was nothing malicious about his collision, um, just one of those sort of symbols of rotten luck. And, and frankly, just epitomized how the World Cup has been a, a hoodoo tournament for the poor guy, um, you know, since, since kingdom come, really. Um, but look, let's face it, he's been a fantastic servant to South African rugby since something like 2002. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, he will go down as one of the great Springbok centers. Rob, I suppose, um, you know, all, all due respect to Jean, and we know what an amazing leader and what a player he's been, but there has been some sentiments, obviously, with uh, Hanukkah Mad taking along these sort of um, maybe over the hill type players, you know, and persevering with them like Jean, like Mc Victor Matfield. I guess, you know, the silver lining is that, you know, your, the, this midfield combination, Jesse Creel and Damien Delende, can now really sort of take hold yes i mean that is that is a big positive a lot of people will will say with some um sort of justification really that uh, that dalende and creel was one of the sort of the few um sort of firing links if you like in, in an otherwise troubled springbok side this year um so now now it is sort of full steam ahead for them to resume that uh, that combination um and uh, you know uh, the, the only reservation you have perhaps is that you know as we get to the business end of the tournament it really is about sort of bmt and uh, they are still both very inexperienced having said that uh, i thought both were highly impressive again um against samoa um, jesse creel when he came off the bench really looked as though he had a bee in his bonnet mm. uh, really keen to get involved um the one little complication of course nick is that uh, you know that they that both the other centers have also got niggles um as things stand damien delende is, yeah. is nursing a, um, a bit of a knee problem jesse creel took a fearful crack just in front of me actually right in front of where i was sitting um and there was there was a bit of claret coming out of his his cheek after a, another sort of uh, you know fiery collision with one of the samoans mm. so um you know they, they both had had their little sort of scares in the last couple of days and, and the springboks are not yet settled in terms of the injury situation you know even Fari de Priya mm -hmm. uh, has apparently got a little bit of a niggle again, which is frankly the last thing South Africa need because I thought he was absolutely instrumental in um, in getting the spark going, especially yeah. on the Springbok backline, in registering the uh, you know getting getting the uh, running in several tries for a bonus point. Um, so he he was a, he's an absolutely critical link uh, in in the Springbok plans for the rest of the tournament, and uh, we really do. I think the, the busiest man at the moment in the Springbok camp yet again must be Dr. Craig Roberts. Yeah, well, of course, we're going to hear from him later this afternoon exactly on the status of, of those injuries. Robert, now, the Springbok captaincy, I suppose, the uh, logical choice, because he's been vice captain, is Victor Matfield. You wrote an article, which I read, you know, sort of laying out the, the options. Um, who would you like to see take the skipper's armband? Who do you think it will be? I think, um, I'm, look, I, I would be happy if it is Victor Matfield. And I, as you say, um, you know, uh, logic, I think, uh, dictates that he should be the guy. He is the, he has been the, the deputy to, to Jean de Villiers, and he's been the long-time pack leader and sort of key sort of um, tactical driver of the Springbok pack, if you like. So, um, and we all know, you know, what, what an awesome sort of line-outs um, uh, technician uh, he is. So um, he, he's, he's very much at the fulcrum of the side. He is the most capped Springbok in history um, and you just sort of think well you know it's tailor-made for him to do the sort of the hospital job now 
and mm. and take over um, from Jean de Villiers. So I, I will be surprised if it's anybody but Victor. Although mm. the, the one thing I will say is that um, Henneke is spoiled for choice in terms of proven mm. leadership in the Bok camp. Um, he made, uh, rightfully, before the tournaments, quite a big uh, um, song and dance about the fact that he was blessed with a sort of a, I think he spoke of a sort of a quartet of leadership, which mm. was um, Jean de Villiers, uh, Victor Matfield, um, and uh, Farid de Prier, obviously, um, you know, very much uh, in the mix as well, and uh, Skalk Berger. Um, Skalk is an interesting character because mm. he's been playing really good rugby. Yeah. Um, I thought he was terrific against Samoa, and of course he has been a very popular leader of the Stormers mm. um, at times when Jean de Villiers uh, hasn't and like, had the reins. And like you uh, said, for usually for three reasons. Sorry, like you said, Skalk possibly a bit more of a ballsy captain. I mean, he's, uh, you know, would kind of make the more sort of uh, risky decisions, uh, that kind of thing. Yes. Yes, what you see is what you get with, with Victor Matfield. Um, uh, quite a sort of systems-driven rugby player, if you like. Um, he, he likes to sort of, uh, you know, um, analyze things from a, from a tactical point of view. We know how good he is at sort of uh, mm. calculating um, opposition throw-in uh, at line-outs and so on. Uh, he, so he's quite a, um, as, as I say, sort of a calculating captain. I think Skalk is a lot more impulsive. Um, yeah. like the guy who's, he's almost, uh, he, 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 he really enjoys his rugby. I'm not saying Victor doesn't, but, but Skalk has a little bit of a cavalier attitude, which can rub off quite well, um, mm. because he, he's, he's just really sort of a fiery up and atom character. He really, uh, he puts his body on the line every single minute that he's in a, in a Springbok jersey um, and sort of inspires everyone around him. But, you know, um, Skalk is also capable of making sometimes slightly cavalier sort of decisions. And I'm just not sure whether he fits the sort of the Heineke Meyer um, plan at this stage for, mm. for acting captaincy for the rest of the tournament. Um, I wouldn't object in the slightest if he did make Skalk the, the skipper. But I, I really do think it's going to be Victor Matfield, especially considering their long, long historical mm. link at the Bulls. You know, he and Heineke Meyer, yeah. um, you know, they've won Super Rugby. They've, uh, they've been a, um, a winning combination at the Bulls. And uh, I, I will be very surprised if, if Victor doesn't now um, pull the shots, especially as he had a very good game again after having a bit of uh, flack um, after the Japan game. Mm. Uh, I thought Victor roared back into his own uh, in the last game against Samoa when the box really needed to sort of stand up and, and be counted. Um, so that was a big feather in his cap. And I think that will clear the way uh, for him to, uh, to take over as skipper for the rest of the tournament.